template for a handbag card online. And I'm going to show you how you can use those same measurements to turn it into something you can cut with your Cricut. If you go on Google and type in card templates, I'm sure you can find a lot of different examples and you can do the same process with any of those, but I'm going to be specifically working on this handbag card. So the overall dimensions, I'm going to start with that and put in a shape. It's really about breaking everything down into its simplest shapes. So the overall width is 12 inches. And yes, I know I cannot cut something 12 inches wide on my Cricut, but what I can do is design this whole thing exactly as the designer created it and then scale it down so that it fits on my Cricut. So then this is four and a half. Okay, so next I want to place all the different score lines into this. So I'm going to change this to white. And then let's go back to our shapes and add our score line, which is also going to be four and a half. And if we first take that and say align things to the left and then align them so they're centered ver vertically. Now that score line is right at the edge. If I can go back to my image here, now I can see how far in each one of these are from this edge. So the first one goes in three and a half inches. So right now, if I look at my XY position, that's where on these grids, everything is placed. I'm going to change this and select everything and make it, let's just say three by three or three by two. Cause otherwise, I don't know about you, but when I start looking at X, Y coordinates, I forget which is the X and which is the Y. So if I have my X set for three, I can see three lines up here. If I have my Y set for two, so that helps me remember. So now if I want this first line to be three and a half inches over, I would say, well, it's at three. So if I move it three and a half inches to the right, that would be adding another three and a half. So that would be six and a half. I just had a thought before I do that, let's count out how many score lines we're going to need. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's duplicate this score line here and stack six, six of them on top of each other. That way I have everything all ready to go. Okay, so now I can click here and that will select one of the score lines or I could have selected from here over on this side. And let's make that 6.5. And you can see that moved it to this location. So now the next one, so we just keep doing that same math. And if you want to print out this design here and you can do the math right below here, like I actually did. And then you'll know that that next one needs to be at seven and a quarter.
Okay, so now we have all of our score lines placed. And with these score lines here, it's good kind of just do really close folds to next to each other. So it almost has like a pleated bottom. It'll be a nice place to stick a gift card or some money in there. So now going back to this design, if I look here, basically this is a half an inch down and then over to the nine and a half mark. Um, and it's a rectangle. So let's insert a rectangle, those same dimensions, and just slice that out. So let's go back to our shapes and we're going to insert a shape that's going to be a half an inch in height. And then let's remember to unlock it so we can stretch it to be two and a half inches long because I'm working this direction now. So if I go 12 minus nine and a half, that gets me two and a half, which is basically from this corner. Whoops. There we go. From this corner to this corner to this corner to this corner and then back there. And I'm going to need that on both sides. So I'm going to duplicate that. I want to keep all my score lines right where I positioned them. I'm going to first turn off the square and make these score lines a group. The reason I'm doing this is then once they're grouped together, I can make them work all together. So I can turn them all off at once. So now I can turn this back on and just work with making those little notches that I was showing you and not mess up anything else. So we go align to the right and then we're going to align these to the top and I'm actually going to slice those right now. You can see I only have two things selected. Remember, slice will not work if you have more than two things selected. So now I can click on that and delete it and get rid of that little notch. And now the square jumped behind, so let's go arrange it to the front and align everything to the bottom and slice that. Get rid of that and get rid of that. Okay, the next part's gonna be a little bit harder. Not gonna lie. We have to get a point at six and three quarters to that little notch that we just created. I'm going to go back and get another score line. And again, make it four and a half. <laughs> Now I want to move that one over. Okay, so what this line is now representing is this point. So I need a new line to go from that point to that point. There's no way in design space to say I want to slice a line from this intersection to this intersection. So I am going to kind of have to eyeball it. Um, since we're not making this for you know, some precision cutting thing, they'll be okay. 
adjusts a card. And I can kind of rotate. Basically what I, what I do is keep rotating this until I have a line that goes from that point to this point. It's pretty darn close. So I'm going to guess since this is kind of close to 350 that my angle I'm going to want is 350 because let's think about it. Mathematically that's probably they probably used real numbers. So I'm going to zoom in here so we can see what's going on. And let's see if I take this at an angle and put the top of it at 6. Oh, that does kind of work. Okay. So then, because now that point lined up with this point, so then I'm going to go with that and say that looks good. So now I want to take this rectangle, I'm going to zoom back out, this larger piece, hold my shift key, and hit slice. Now I can get rid of these pieces. Looking pretty good. Now I want to create that same angle on the other side. I am going to duplicate this one. After I duplicate it, I'm going to flip it because now that slice is on the other side. So now if I put this at 3 and 2, because I could have just put the other put another square over here and done the whole angle thing, but then one angle might have not matched the other angle. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So if I take this one and this one and slice, now if I get rid of all these little corner pieces, you can see now I have two stacked on top of each other, but that's okay because in the end I got what I needed. Now I have to do another angled slice over here. And actually, now that I think about it, if I would have been smart in my planning, I would have done both of my slices on one side and then flipped and done them both on the other side. But now we just get to practice this whole process over again. So this is that same score line that I used as my eyeballing where I was going to put things. So I'm going to just move that back to be my one that's going to be in this point. So let's and let's arrange that to the front. So now we can see it. So now I need a line that goes from a half an inch in here to that point. So I am going to do another score line and rotate that. Let's put that at our three and two. And now it's going to go down Inches. There we go. So now I need another angle going from here to here. So back to our shapes. Let's make this one three inches wide. And start playing with things. And I'm going to zoom in. 
white piece, hold my shift key, and slice away and I hold my shift key on my keyboard so that I can select more than one thing at the same time because sometimes it's hard to pick the things from the screen, the canvas, just because there's so much stuff right on top of each other. So then picking right from the layers panel and holding that shift key allows you to do that more easily. So this is my score line for this way for just my placement. I'm all done with that now so I can get rid of that one. And that was for the other way. So again, we're going to do the same. Duplicate this. Flip it. Put it at the three and two spot. So it's right on top. So now I can select both of those things and hit slice. And if you go over here to the layers panel, you can kind of see there's just a little sliver there. So I'm just going to start deleting those little slivers first. And then what I'm left with is actually two of these pieces stacked on top of each other. So just delete one. Okay. Whew, that was fun. But it was kind of some brain power. A little math. So now this grouping that had all my score lines, I am going to turn that back on because remember I turned it off for a while. And then I can take that and arrange it to the front. So now you can see all those score lines are still right where I need them for this handbag card. Now I want to select everything and attach those. Attaching will hold the placement and position of things. So this is going to be the front flap of our handbag. Then this is you know, the body piece and the back piece. And actually now the more and more I look at it, I kind of want these corners to be curved and kind of rounded. So what if we did another shape? I'm just going to play with an idea here and see what happens. If I take this half circle and make it four inches long, flip it. Oh, it actually would be three and a half. Do your math, Sean. Okay. So if I did that, it would give this whole thing kind of a curve. Or do I want to just kind of curve the edges a little bit. This is how I play around with things. So you're kind of seeing inside my brain and my thought process. Okay, so let's look at this for a sec. If I slice this right here, then this becomes the edge. If I use this instead, I kind of like that. Okay, let's do this. So I'm going to first detach that grouping that I just attached, I know. 
and then turn it off because I don't want to work with those at all. I just want to work with this piece. So now I say align that align that to the right. Oh, okay. I want it to align to the top of this notch, but I don't want to move where that is. So what if I align this big white piece to the oval on a horizontal center? Center vertically. Okay, so it is in the right place. So now I go slice. Why I get rid of let's get rid of this. Okay, so for this white piece, the biggest white piece, I want to get rid of those little corners. So I'm gonna use contour and just hide them away. So now if I go back and weld those two pieces together. That gives me my curved piece. I'm going to put this back to three because it shifted a little with my aligning. Turn my grouping back on and arrange it to the front. And now that front purse is going to kind of have a curved rounded flap. I like that. All right. We're going to attach that. This is going to be my card base. If I wanted to add pattern to it, this is going to be the next step. So you can add little patterned pieces in here so that you have one continuous base, but then you can kind of layer these patterned pieces on top of it. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to do an offset. And I'm going to use this offset line and have it go to the inside of the whole thing. That looks good actually. Let's hit apply. And I'm just going to make that a different color so that we can see it. Now I don't need that to go all the way through. I can split that on different places, kind of like we did with inserting the score lines. So then I would have one piece that kind of goes on the flat front. So let's figure out that math. So if we insert some more squares. So I know to that first score line is three and a half inches over. So what if we do is three and a half, put this at the three and two, okay. So now we would need the height of it to match the overall design. So that would be four and a half. Okay, so that's good, but we don't want it to be exactly on the line. We want it to have a little bit of a buffer around it. So what if we did an offset? deleted that one. Yeah, that might work. Okay, so let's take this whole big white piece and turn it off. And then take this and slice it. So we're going to get rid of these little edges. And let's 
get rid of this one. And that leaves this piece here. Let's change that to a different color just so I can see how that lines up with everything here. Okay, so look at this. That's going to be just a little bit of a border around these edges. And then you can see there's the score line. So it's just a little bit. I think that's going to work really nice. So let's try doing that same thing over here. Okay, so because I didn't want to bore you with doing the same thing over here, but I basically repeated the process, inserted a square, made it big enough to cover this, moved it over, did the little offset so that I had the right distance from the score line in here, and then sliced that. Changed that to, I'm just going with tan for right now. So now to create the piece that goes in here, it would be the same piece as this, only flip. So I'm just going to duplicate this, flip it, horizontally and then that would sit right in here. Okay, so then I don't need the gray piece so I can totally delete that. So now you can see what it's going to cut is one big white piece, that's my main card base, and then these layered pieces that I would place over the top. So going back to the card idea, that's how that all lays out. Now, I could put a little clasp closure here, or I could put some double sticky tape on the back side of this that will just hold it shut. And then I could add either a ribbon or a long piece of cardstock to be the handle. So what if you wanted these pieces to be a pattern? There's a couple ways to do that. I was looking at some coach purses and what if I went coach pattern? I could find something like this. That one is not super clear. So look around and see what you can find and find one you like. Okay, so I'm gonna take this pattern and I'm gonna go save image as. And I have a folder that I call hold for stuff like this. I'm gonna just put it there and say coach pattern. So now I'm going to go to Uploads. And I want to upload a pattern fill. I'm going to go Upload Pattern and Browse. And I'm going to go to my Holds folder where I just placed that pattern. So you can see it brought in the pattern. It's saying it's a print then cut. Call it a coach pattern. If I wanted to, I could tell it what color family it is. So I could help it group things together, but I'm going to click upload. So now what I'm going to do is when I go back here into my project, I can click this piece and change it to a print then cut. And now I'm going to change the color of it to pattern. And you can see there's going to be a whole bunch of patterns in here. And I think that's my coach one. There it is. So it's really tiny. So if I go edit pattern, I can scale it up or down. Oh, I like it right around there. So let's go with 290 just to have a nice number. Okay, that's good. So then let's do this one. 
has a pattern. Change it to pattern. Find my pattern. Edit my pattern. Okay, so I want to look at that for a second. So this one, turn your head and look at the way it's going to go. If you wanted to flip it at all, you can, but I think that's going to be fine. Change this to print, then cut. Change that from color to pattern. There's my pattern. Edit the pattern. So the scale is 290. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit different because of the size of this piece. So let's edit it again. I wish there was a way to edit it in, in relation to the other pieces. That looks kind of good. Or I could do that flap in a solid color. So now when I go to make it, it is going to print these patterns, cut those pieces, and then it will do the base card. I almost forgot the last step. So because I don't want to have to buy extra long cardstock for this, which is 12 inches wide. And I know that my Cricut on one cutting mat for a standard 12 by 12 sheet will only cut 11 and a half inches. So I am going to take this whole thing and group it. Group it's going to keep the properties of all the print and cut and the score lines separate and not mess any of that up. But now I can resize the whole thing. So I can take this and say, I get 11 and a half and see how I took everything down proportionally. I designed the whole thing at the 12 inches wide because that's what the template pattern was that I was using. And I didn't want to mess with those numbers. So now to make it design space compatible, I just resized it after grouping. Now let's assemble the card. I started off with folding everything on the score lines. And I want to show you this from a side view. This is how it should look. It should form an M when it goes up and down, up and down, because that's going to make this cute little pocket, which you can put a gift card or some money or tickets to a show. And then you fold it up like this and boom, it's a cute little card. Now I did notice something on this base piece. When I was looking at the back, I could see the white centers of the cardstock. So I'm going to take my ink pad and just run it across those edges. This is called inking your edges. You can do this for any paper craft, especially if you have cardstock that is a white core and it just kind of helps to hide that white so it's not so harsh. It gives it a cleaner, more finished look too. And I think I'm actually going to do it around the outside edge of the entire base just to give it an extra pop. So I'm just running the ink pad around the edges. You can also use a marker if you don't have ink pads. Just get a marker, even a Sharpie and run that edge just along the marker. It just softens that edge a little bit. Now it's time to add those pieces that we printed out and then cut with our Cricut. And I'm just gonna add a little double-sided sticky tape to the back of the pieces and lay them in place. You can use any pattern you want for this little 
upload pattern print then cut trick that I showed you. Now I'm going to put this card in here just to show this is where I would put my little gift. And I want to close it. I want the flap to hold down, but I don't want it to be like glued together. So I'm using these glue dots. They kind of have the stickiness of a post-it note. So you can stick something, but you can still open the card. So I just set it on the flap and then it's got a clear plastic cover. So I'm just going to peel that back to expose the dot, which is now coming off onto my thumb. But I got it. So now I can stick it down and give this as a card, but somebody can still open the flap. I wanted to go an extra step on this. I'm going to use some vinyl and my favorite pin pen. And you can see it's just got a little pin sticking out of the end of the pen. And I cut the word coach out of gold vinyl. And I'm first going to peel out the centers. This is called weeding. And then I am going to get the corner started. And then you're going to see that I'm going to pull away, almost rolling back the excess. This helps me to weed things, I think, easier. And then if I see something starting to lift up, I can just hold it down with my finger, but kind of just peeling away the excess and rolling it back rather than just kind of ripping it off. Works better for me. Now, because I am going to place this on cardstock, I don't want to use a really super sticky transfer tape. So what I'm using here is Glad Press and Seal. Get it in the kitchen department of your favorite store. So I put the press and seal over there and burnish it both front and back. And again, I'm using press and seal because it's sticky enough to hold on to my vinyl piece without ruining my cardstock when I place it down. Now I'm going to just roll the backing off. I think if this rolling the backing off method helps keep everything in place and Otherwise you get letters lifting up and that's just bad. So now I can place this and kind of center it how I want it. But you can see I can pick it up pretty easy and readjust things because that press and seal is just kind of tacky without being like the strong grip of a transfer tape. And now I just rub it in place and then I'll be able to just peel that press and seal off it didn't affect my cardstock at all. I did add a little piece of ribbon for a handle on this. And then once I close it up, there's my card all ready to go. Before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I love to hear from you.